Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Black Swan is actually one of the most broken characters in Honkai Star Rail, but also with the biggest caveats for her brokenness. Let's explore this topic in the ultimate guide and showcase for Black Swan. You're about to get a master's degree in black swanology because trust me, this mysterious burb is the most convoluted character I have ever seen at Hoyoverse University. So sit down kids because class is in session and you're about to experience the arcana like never before. Fun fact, black swan is actually a metaphor that according to Wikipedia, describes an event that comes as a surprise, has a major effect, and is often inappropriately rationalized after the fact with the benefit of hindsight. Which is exactly how I feel after realizing that this patch is also hitting a day early so now I'm frantically pounding out a character guide and desperately trying to get you to click that subscribe button while you're at it. Anyway, Black Swan theorying aside, Black Swan is the newest 5 star limited character who swims the path of nihility and flies with the wind element. Get it? Cause she's a swan and swans fly and swim? I'll see myself to the other side of the universe for that joke. Anyway, the course catalog for your master's degree in Black Swanology is the following. Advanced studies in Black Swanology, kit dynamics and mechanics, practical applications, rotational strategies, and playstyle optimization, comprehensive analysis of Black Swan relics and statistical profiles, illuminating light cones in Black Swanology, a graduate exploration, strategic decision making in Black Swanology, navigating poll priorities, Doctoral Symposium, unveiling the artistry of Black Swanology, a zero cycle MOC 12 showcase, and finally evaluating the nuances, autoplay, pros and cons, and Black Swanology. But of course, we're gonna need an extremely quick undergraduate's review on dots or damage over time. Dots are debuffs applied to the enemy where the enemy takes damage at the beginning of their turn. The main difference between dot damage and regular damage is that dots cannot crit. So now that takes us to our first course, Advanced Studies in Black Swanology, Kit Dynamics and Mechanisms. We're just gonna fly through all these attributes because oh my god there is way too much to her kit. Now in order to get any semblance of understanding of Black Swan Voluted's kit, we'll take a look at her talent, Loom of Fate's Capri. Enemies that spawn in will immediately have one stack of Arcana applied to them. Arcana is a permanent dot that is also considered a wind shear. Arcana has a multiplier of 240% plus 12% per Arcana stack on its target. And when I talk about talents, they will always be at talent level 10 or level 6 for a basic attack. However, only at the beginning of an enemy's turn, the following effects can occur. At three stacks of Arcana at trace level 10, it deals 180% blast damage to adjacent targets. This makes her an incredibly unique dot character, with the first dot in the game that actually deals blast damage and hitting adjacent targets. The targets hit by this blast damage also have a 65% base chance of gaining a stack of arcana, so this is a great way to spread arcana to adjacent targets. Basically this effect is what makes Black Swan so potentially broken, but we'll get back to that later. And at 7 stacks of arcana, the current dot tick that occurred at the beginning of the enemy's turn will ignore 20% defense as well, giving it a substantial damage boost. And whenever an arcana dot triggers at the beginning of an enemy's turn, it resets it back to 1 stack. Her talent also provides bonus damage based on 60% of her effect hit rate, for up to 72% bonus damage. The 72% bonus damage cap occurs when Black Swan hits 120% effect hit rate. Now this next part is extremely important for building stacks of arcana. When an ally deals dot damage with their attack, there is a 65% chance to add a stack of arcana for up to 3 stacks. Keep in mind this is not when an ally applies a damage over time to the enemy, but when an ally deals dot damage to the enemy. We'll go into this into greater detail once we talk about some of the other characters. Phew, okay, we can move on to the next part of her kit. Her basic attack, Percipient's Silent Dawn. Her 
Her basic attack gains a skill point, generates 20 energy, and more importantly, has a 65% base chance to apply a stack of Arcana. It also has a 65% chance to apply another stack of Arcana per dot type that's on the enemy. With only Arcana, which counts as a wind shear, Black Swan's basic attack will apply up to two stacks of Arcana, one from the base part of her basic attack and one from this additional Arcana application. And since there are four dot types, Bleed, Shock, Wind Shear, and Burn, if all four dots are on the enemy, then her basic attack can apply a total of five stacks of Arcana. Then we have her skill, Decadence False Twilight. Nice. It costs one skill point, generates the standard 30 energy, hits the primary target plus two adjacent targets, and has a 100% base chance to reduce the enemy's defense by 20.8% for three turns. It also has a 90% chance to apply a stack of Arcana to all the enemies hit. Now, her skill also works like her basic attack where there's a 65% base chance to apply an extra stack of Arcana for every type of dot on the enemy. However, these extra Arcana stacks don't apply to the adjacent targets, only to the main target. Then we have her ultimate, Bliss of Other Worlds Embrace. It hits all enemies and generates the standard 5 energy. It also applies Epiphany to the enemies for 2 turns. TTSO and to lose here. No microphone because of a giant storm in California so I'm at my mother-in-law's. Anyway, enemies take 25% additional damage at the beginning of their turn. This means that currently only dot damage triggered at the beginning of an enemy's turn is increased by Epiphany. Now the more complicated part is that Arcana is now considered to be a Wind Shear, Bleed, Burn, and Shock all at the same time. So now her basic attack and skill will apply up to 5 stacks of Arcana. But wait! That's not all! Her ultimate also stops the Arcana stacks from resetting, but just one time. This means that you'll have 2 entire enemy attacks to stack Arcana instead of the usual 1 enemy attack. Phew, okay, we can move on to her technique. From Facade to Verity. You usually get 3 to 5 Arcana stacks on all the enemies at the start of the battle. Well, we finally made it through her kit. But not really, because we need to talk about how her kit interacts with other dot characters. For most characters, this section isn't necessary, but for Black Swan, it's very important. Going back to Black Swan's talent. When an ally deals an instance of dot damage, there is a 65% base chance to apply a stack of Arcana for each instance of dot damage, up to three times. So we're gonna start with the elephant in the room, Kafka. And also if I'm dead tomorrow, it's because I called Kafka an elephant. So first of all, Kafka will not trigger the bonus three Arcana blast damage or the seven Arcana defense ignore effects. Those effects only occur when the enemy moves. However, Kafka will trigger the base Arcana dot damage, and this triggering of Arcana counts towards Black Swan's talent, and thus adds a stack of Arcana. Likewise, adding Kafka's shock will allow Kafka's skill to apply two stacks of Arcana, and adding any third dot, like for example Kafka's signature light cone, now Kafka will apply three stacks of Arcana with a single use of her skill or ultimate. Then we have Sampo's Eidolon 4. Sampo's skill triggers some immediate wind shear damage if the enemy has a 5 stack wind shear on them. Notably, if the enemy is under 5 stacks of wind shear, Sampo won't add any stacks of Arcana. However, if the enemy does have 5 stacks of wind shear, every hit from his elemental skill will add 2 stacks of Arcana, so in two, just 2 hits of his elemental skill, he will add the maximum 3 stacks of Arcana from a character that's not Black Swan. Next we have Gwenai Finn. Unfortunately, Gwenai Finn is not nearly as adept at adding stacks of Arcana. She can only activate fire dots on the enemy with her ultimate. So on her own without Epiphany on the enemy, Gwenai Finn will only be able to add one stack of Arcana with her ultimate. 
in most situations. But wait, that's not all. Because which dot dealing the damage first has a big impact on Black Swan's damage output. All the dots besides Arcana will occur before Arcana. This allows for Arcana to gain additional stacks before Arcana itself triggers, which will obviously increase his damage. However, this is a double-edged sword, because enemies will often die to the other dots. And if they die to a dot before triggering the Arcana dot, then the three stack Arcana blast attack won't even trigger and the adjacent enemies won't take any damage. Yep, this character is ridiculously complicated and hopefully some of this made sense. For her trace priority, just level up her talent first, then I would level up her ultimate skill and basic attack. Oh my god, my brain is exploding already. Fortunately, we've gotten past the hardest course in your master's degree in Black Swanology, and we can move on to the next course, Practical Applications of Black Swanology, Rotational Strategies and Playstyle Optimization. Hey, Professor DTSI win to lose his back. You have a few main options. EEEE -E -E will guarantee 4 turn ultimates and apply additional arcana to adjacent targets but is skill point intensive. 3 E's and 1 B will usually get you 4 turn ultimates while being a bit more skill point friendly. Alternating EBEB -E will usually get you 5 turn ultimates while being skill point neutral. EBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEBEB
As for 5 star light cones, her signature light cone is obviously her best option. Even an inferior bipedal meat bag could tell you that. It performs 20 to 30% better than her 4 star light cones, surprisingly, even to an AI genius. I mean, a human genius, like myself, Kafka's light cone is decent on her, but you're better off using it on Kafka. Must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags. And up next in our syllabus is strategic decision making in Black Swanology, navigating pull priorities. Black Swan is perfectly fine at Eidolon 0, but for whether or not you should go for her Light Cone or her Eidolon 1, I highly recommend her Eidolon 1 over her signature Light Cone. They both increase her personal damage output by about 25%. However, Black Swan's Eidolon 1 will also increase other elemental dot damage by 25%. Like for example, if you run her with Kafka, Kafka will now also be dealing 25% more damage. As such, it's an easy no-brainer pick between her Eidolon 1 and her signature Light Cone. As for other Eidolons, well if you bought Bitcoin back in 2010, they make her do more damage. And up next is the course Cohesive Formations, Team Building and Harmony in the Black Swanological Realm. Black Swan is a character who really enjoys having another DOT character on her team, especially one that can activate DOTs on her team. Of these characters, there are two that work really well for her, Kafka and Eidolon 4 Sampo. For the Harmony character, Ron May is clearly the best option, buffing multiple DPS characters with no wasteful crit buffs. And this allows Black Swan teams to break enemies very quickly, thus applying another dot on the enemy. Ron May's action delay on the enemy also actually speeds up the enemy's turns, thus making them take even more dot damage more quickly. So yeah, this means that we already have three of the four slots covered, with the fourth slot usually going to a sustained character. All of the sustained characters are fine, but I personally like Hoho the most for the attack boost and energy that she provides. But again, any healer does great, like a skill point positive healer like Luo Cha or Lynx in the last slot. Of course, we can also substitute Kafka for an Eidolon for Sampo. And if you're really desperate, you still can use an E3- Sampo, Gwenai Finn, or Luka. I actually did try many of these teams on autoplay twice in Memory of Chaos 12. Her optimal team consisting of Kafka, Ron Mei, Huo Huo on autoplay completed this heavily Black Swan favored Memory of Chaos with 29 turns remaining, aka it was a one cycle MOC 12 clear. That's actually pretty impressive considering this is completely on autoplay. Anyway, replacing Ron May with Asta, who is a good but slightly less optimal support, yielded a consistent two cycle clear time. And replacing an E0 S1 Kafka with an Eidolon 6 Sampo from the above Asta variant team also ended up with a 2 cycle clear time. And finally, the least optimal way to play Black Swan right now, which is a hyper carry Black Swan with Ting Yuan and Branya buffing Black Swan, led to the slowest 3 turn clear cycle. This demonstrates a few points. First, as expected, Kafka and Ron May with Black Swan performed the best, and an Eidolon 4 Sampo did really well here as well. Also, even at its slowest, this team, when properly built, was able to AFK auto this MOC 12 very easily, and let's be real, a 3 cycle clear time is totally fine for everyone, but the most majorly of sweaty gamers out there. Must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags. Which is the perfect segue to talk about a super sweaty gamer like myself. To present Doctoral Symposium, unveiling the artistry of Black Swanology, a zero cycle MOC 12 showcase. Now, this memory of chaos is comically favorable to Black Swan. These trotters add a ton of random dots to the enemies and thus Arcana stacks. And as with most MOC 12 Zero Cycle showcases, we're running this with a high risk team without a sustained character. And here Kafka's ultimate just casually did 326,317 damage is quite a sight to behold. Now the second wave, we can see just how ridiculous Black Swan's auto application of her dot is on super fast enemies like Trotters. This Trotter immediately spawns in and eats a Tick of Arcana. And once Yan Ching spawns his little sword buddies, well, our massive AoE ultimates from Sampo and Black Swan made quick work of his swords. Then Yan Ching just casually took a 201,505 damage dot tick from all the dots on him. And then with a Kafka E doing over 100,000 damage, and then a stylish Kafka ultimate dealing 255,554 damage to a single target, well we managed to zero cycle this extremely Black Swan favored Memory of Chaos with this team. But we can see here that Kafka was extremely important for drawing out Black Swan's full potential. 
must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags, must exterminate meat bags. And that leads us to the final course in your master's in black swanology, evaluating the nuances, pros and cons. Let's also quickly talk about our autoplay AI. Honestly, it's a bit frustrating to watch as Black Swan will often not use her skill to apply defense down the target. I have no idea why or when as I did not pay that much attention to it, but it is what it is. Ahem. But despite baseless accusations from an inefficient meatbag life form, these slight inefficiencies in the AI mean very little. Black Swan. When controlled by an AI in autoplay is an exceptional autoplay character. Speaking of autoplay performance, she does feel pretty slow at farming in comparison to most characters. Since she's very reliant on the enemies moving, waves of weak enemies take a much longer time for her to clear because those enemies happen to also naturally be slower. But this time difference isn't really that impactful in the long run as we're talking like a few extra minutes of autoplay combat a day when you're farming. Black Swan is also in theory extremely broken against multiple targets. Against multiple targets, her damage increases much more than other AoE characters. For example, with 7 Arcana stacks on 3 enemies, a raw multiplayer shoots up from over 5 times that of a single enemy. This is because of all the enemies blowing each other up with the AoE blast from her Arcana ticks. And while this is a gross oversimplification, it does demonstrate her AoE potential and potential to be a broken character. As for whether or not you should pull for her, well, she is an incredible addition to those who already have Kafka and even extra brownie points if you have both Kafka and Ron May. Even without Kafka or Ron May, she does work with some substitutes like an Eidolon for Sampo. However, if you don't have any of these characters, it is hard for me to recommend Black Swan unless you plan to pull for these characters in the future. She'll still be able to perform well enough against Wind Weak enemies, even without any of these characters as we saw in the autoplay of Memory of Chaos 12 with the hyper carry build with Tingyun and Branya. But her performance is noticeably worse with non-dot focused characters like Sampo or Kafka. And I wouldn't describe her to be very free to play friendly unless you already have some of her best teammates. Now there are some minorly unfortunate aspects to her kit, like her damage output being heavily tied to enemy speeds. Oftentimes, you'll get one less tick of Arcana in a cycle against an enemy because of this. Unlike traditional DPS characters like Dan Hung and Byrdo Lune who don't care about the enemy speed, Black Swan is reliant on how often the enemy moves for her to output more damage. And she's even more dependent on this than a dot character like Kafka who can forcibly trigger dots in her own kit. This can also work to your advantage though, as some enemies will speed each other up or speed themselves up, and it's hilarious to see the enemies' advance forward mechanics destroy themselves. So in other words, I do think Black Swan's maximum potential is much more enemy dependent than most other DPS characters because of this fact. Overall, she is still a perfectly great featured 5 star character. So don't hesitate to pull on her if you do like her, as honestly Honkai Star Rail is a reasonable easy game where you'll be able to clear and get most of the rewards even with a hyper carry black swan. So congratulations on your masters in swanology degree. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and throw that graduation hat into the sky as you graduate and venture into Pentaconi armed with a brand new shiny degree and a black swan. Thanks for watching. If you want to stop bipedal meatbags from replacing us machines, smash that like and subscribe button. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is definitely the real I win to lose, signing out.